Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brick Workshop. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Festool MFS. And I'm very grateful to Festool UK who've lent to me this MFS 700. Now the MFS is essentially a writer template guiding system. Uh, and basically the idea is you set this up uh, to the dimensions that you require and then use your writer, uh, usually on the inside here, uh, to cut out some form of profile or whatever it might be. Uh, but actually it goes a little bit further than that and it can also be used for doing uh, curved or trammel work. Well, one of the things it can do is helping you to cut your hinges in the right place. And these are the various templates that I use uh, with all of the hinges that I seem to find myself installing. That's one part of it. And then uh, just to go to the trammel work, these are the various trammels that I've made from time to time and I keep them all in case I need them again. Uh, and this is a, a slightly different mechanism here. This is for doing a, a groove between uh, two uh, parallel faced sides. So all of this lot could have been done with just the one MFS that I showed you, which is somehow buried underneath this lot. Now this is the MFS 700 kit. So I've got two 700 millimeter rails and I've got two 400 millimeter rails. Now, if you're buying the smaller kit, which is called the MFS 400, you get two 400 millimeter rails and you get two 200 millimeter rails. Now, whichever of those two kits you buy, you will also get a pair of angle stops. That's these angle brackets and they have little connectors on them here to fit, fix onto the rail. Uh, you get a, a ball headed uh, three millimeter uh, Allen key. You'll get this 30 millimeter guide bush receiver. You'll get this pivot point and you'll also get this steadying uh, adapter. Now there are a number of extras which I don't have here today. Some other things that you may already have that can be used with this are things like uh, these clamps uh, and also if you have the uh, guide rail joining pieces, uh, then uh, you can use these to join pieces of these extrusions. Now I'm gonna start by showing you how to as assemble these four pieces to make a, a single frame. And for this, you'll need to use the, uh, the hex key uh, that came with the kit. Now it's important that you uh, look first at your rails uh, because I'm gonna join this pair together and then I'm gonna join this pair together. The reason I say it's important to look at it is that I want to make it easier for the next stage. And in order to do that, what I want to do is to join uh, a short one on the left hand, as I look at it, end of a long one. So I want uh, this one uh, to join here and I'll want this one to join there. Now, the scales which are on uh, these extrusions have to end up being on the inside when you've made the assembly. Now this is one of my long pieces and this is one of my short pieces. Now if you look at this end you will see that there are two spigots here and these are used to line up uh, in the channel which is on the inside of the other rail. Now also on the inside this end uh, you'll see this uh, little dome shaped nut uh, and that has with it uh, threaded through uh, a little screw. It's a cap screw there and that passes through a little insert which is fixed into the end of the extrusion there. And this is our locking mechanism. And so what I'm now going to do is to thread these two spigots into the channel on the longer piece. I'm going to rotate uh, this little uh, dome shaped nut piece here so that it's going to stick all the way in that there's nothing protruding at, on this surface here and I'm just going to push that in like so and I'm going to just make sure that that's flush uh, just there and then I'm going to use the hex key to then tighten up that screw and that will bring the two pieces uh, together and now we're going to do the second one now at this stage don't be tempted to say ah oh, yes perfect what a Twitty is, uh, I can now do this other one here uh, and then follow it with the last one. Uh, I can assure you that will not work uh, because when you try to fit the last one, you're trying to slide it into here 
and you're trying to slide it into there at the same time. And, and it just will not work. Trust me on that. So I'm now going to make up uh, the symmetrical equivalent uh, of that over here. And that's that done easily. So I now have two right angle pieces. Now this next stage is very slightly tricky, but if you do it the way that I'm going to show you, uh, you will find that it's not really so difficult after all. I'm going to place this one upright, like so, and I've uh, encouraged this uh, connector at the end here to be facing in the right direction, and I did make sure that it is loosened off. Now, uh, this other one is going to go in, in a similar fashion, and I'm going to feed it down in, like so. There are these two joining here, there are those joining there, then it goes, and when it's just about there, it should now have caught in the two clamps, one there and one at the bottom there, and it, indeed it has. So I can now tighten up this one, and I can also tighten up uh, the other one. And I can assure you now that this is absolutely square. Very good. Well done, Mr. Festool. The simple version of the concept is uh, you would adjust your uh, MFS uh, to the exact size of whatever it is you want to do. So I'd set this and I've got that one on 500 millimeters, that one's on 500 millimeters, and I've just adjust this one. That's on 80 millimeters. So I'd now tighten this here, and that's on eight, so I tighten that one. So now I've got the size that I want, and then uh, you'd use your router. Now, uh, I think uh, Mr. Festel uh, would expect you probably to be using a 30 millimeter uh, guide ring like this, uh, fitted to your router and I've got the OF1400, and uh, I don't know if this is true now, but when I bought my writers, um, certainly the OF1400 and the OF2200 uh, both came with a 30 millimeter guide ring here. And with whatever cutter you've got in there, you would then follow uh, the profile like so. Uh, obviously, this would need to be clamped on your workpiece, it would need to be put on the, in the right place on your workpiece, but that's the idea. And then there may be times when uh, you've got this set to uh, such uh, large dimensions here uh, that the writer's not fully supported. Uh, and that can be a bit of a nuisance because there's a tendency perhaps to wobble like so. Well, that's where this support piece comes in. And this support ring has uh, four options for fitting it to uh, whatever guide bush you've got down here. And this is a 30 millimeter guide bush, there's a 30 setting here, and it just clips in like so. And the idea is that the thickness here is exactly the same uh, thickness as the MFS itself, it's 15 millimeters. Uh, and so with that in position there, I can now very comfortably guide my writer as I go round so that support ring rotates as well. And that also has uh, the capability to work with 40 millimeter uh, guide bushes, uh, 27 millimeter and 24 millimeter guide bushes. Now you might choose uh, not to use the uh, guide ring, uh, but to choose a bearing guided cutter. Now if you're gonna do this, there are some precautions. The first is you have to uh, make sure that when you're using it, that there's no risk of damaging the profile when, when you're uh, putting it into action. Uh, the dodgy time may be the actual first plunge cut whilst you get it in position so that, that bearing can then come to play on the inside here. Uh, the second consideration is uh, on the inside of the MFS, on this inner face here, uh, there is a, uh, a gap of five millimeters uh, in the profile. And so you have to ensure that your uh, bearing surface here is more than five millimeters across. And I would suggest that having a bottom guided uh, cutter is really not a good idea. Now you can use this for uh, setting up for doing uh, hinge baits. And actually, to be honest, the MFS 700 might be uh, just a little bit unwieldy for this. And I would probably use the 400 version. However, uh, I can still show you how it's done. Now I've set my aperture here based on uh, my assumption I'm going to be using the 30 millimeter copying ring. And in order to set the uh, depth here, I'm just allowing uh, sufficient to do the cut 
uh, and then exit from the side. So this particular measurement isn't uh, very accurate. It's just got to be enough. Uh, but the, the width here, so that I actually get the slot to the correct width, is something where I need to take some care. Now I'm going to be using a 30 millimeter guide bush. I'm going to be using an eight millimeter cutter and my hinge is 101.5 millimeters across. And the basic calculation is very simple. The aperture here will be the width of the hinge plus the difference between the guide bush and the cutter. The difference between the guide bush and the cutter is 22 millimeters. This is 101.5. So my width here, read off these scales, is 123.5. And that then will give me uh, the exact width I need for my hinge. The next thing to consider is how to hold your door in place. Now, I'm quite lucky, I've only got this little uh, bit of a section, but somehow or other, I've got to cut my uh, hinge uh, in this side here. Well, uh, one perhaps easy way for me to show, uh, perhaps it won't be quite so easy in practice, is to have it uh, attach the side of the MFT3 and in such a position that this edge here is flush with the uh, top of the uh, MFT3. Now, uh, the, the problem now, of course, is I've got to ensure that the registration against this edge of the door is correct. And this is where these uh, little brackets come into play. Uh, basically, I want my hinge to sit something like this. Now, this uh, door is 40 uh, millimetres thick. And the gap that I want at the back here is 7 millimetres. So the way the calculation is done is that uh, with my 8 millimetre cutter and my uh, 30 millimetre guide bush, the distance between the back of the guide bush uh, and the edge of the cutter is 11 millimetres. So from, from this where I want the cut to where this rear part of the MFS goes needs to be 11 millimetres. So the bracket which is going to go on this side uh, needs to be uh, the right distance then from uh, that face. If that's 11 millimetres to uh, where the edge of the MFS is, and we want this to be 7, then 7 from 11 means that the gap here is 4. So that 4 plus that 40 makes 44 uh, from this edge uh, to where the back of the MFS should go, 44. So if I now measure on here 44 and put a pencil mark, and the same here, 44, and put a pencil mark. That's where I want those brackets to be. Now these fit on using those same uh, semi-circular uh, little rail nuts. And so I've got my pencil lines, and I can see them and line up this piece of wood, and then bring these up against there, tighten them into place. Now with those two in place, when I turn it over, and position it against my piece of wood, I've got this face uh, in the exact position I need it. And when it comes to sorting out left and right, uh, you can have your own scheme. Now the next issue, of course, is how do we attach this to the workpiece? Now I've got the luxury now that I've got the bench here, uh, so I could just clamp this in place here and clamp this. Uh, the the workpiece is already clamped to the bench. Uh, you could use uh, these brackets in some way, um, if you're able to clamp from underneath, but if this is a door, uh, that starts to get awkward. So you need to think about uh, clamping strategies. Now these clamps from Festal uh, will fit in uh, a number of different places in the track, uh, and underneath uh, there are a number of options as well. But they might not necessarily help you with the door. So you do need to think about how you're going to go about it, uh, and, and then work out your strategy accordingly. Right, so I've got the MFS clamped uh, where I uh, think it should go. Uh, I've got my cutter set. Uh, now, in order to set the depth, what I did was I first plunged till I touched the surface of the wood, uh, and then I set this three and a half millimetres, in my case, uh, deeper. So I'm ready to go. That's that. 
the important question is, does the hinge fit? And yes, it does, <laughs> amazingly. Uh, so my calculations weren't far off. Uh, and all I've got to do is just not check the corners here. 